Welcome to our national call for national prayer call for racial healing and reconciliation. Uh, I am a Richie Butler, senior pastor of St. Paul United Methodist Church, located in Dallas, Texas. On behalf of uh, my co-conveners and co-conspirators in this effort to heal and rid our our nation of of racial inequality and racial injustice, uh, Kathy Sweeney, uh, Reverend Kathy Sweeney, and Reverend Dr. Andy Stoker. Uh, we thank you and glad you're with us on this day. And if you will, let us open up with a word of prayer. We come on this this Friday morning at 9 a.m. Central, as we do every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Central, believing in the power of prayer, believing that when the people of God come together and pray that prayer will change things. And more importantly, through the power of prayer, it will change us and thus things will begin to change. So we thank you right now of uh, what you are doing in the heavens that will translate into what is what will happen here on earth. What is bound in heaven will be bound on earth and what is loosed in heaven will be loosed on earth. So we declare the victory over racism, over hate, and we affirm your love, your grace, your power, and your authority. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I, I want to take just a moment to really speak a message uh, for those who are in the struggle for justice, who are in the struggle for racial healing, racial equality, those who are in the struggle uh, for those who are oppressed and less fortunate, for those who are down and out and, and those who have been left behind. Uh, because I contend that one of the side effects of those in the struggle those who are in the struggle for racial healing and those who are continuing to fight for social justice, one of the side effects is bitterness. I believe that is a side effect for those who are in the struggle, bitterness, because for specifically those who, who suffer and those who care and are fighting and struggling for those who suffer, can become fatigued, tired, worn down, and find yourself bitter because you do not feel as though there is hope that the work is in vain, that every Friday we get on the call to pray for racial healing, and man, we see incident after incident of racial intolerance, of hate and divisiveness. And I just want to encourage us on this day. This message is for, is for you. And I just want to offer signs of, of bitterness for us. You feel the life-sucking disposition of resentment is beginning to direct your emotions. You do not want this, but you, and you know you don't need it. And we all are positioned, given our circumstances, to fall prey to bitterness and resentment if we are not acutely aware. Bitterness is toxic. It robs you of years of life and it holds you captive. It takes power and transforms, tran trans transfers that power to the undeserving source like hate. We use the same, and we begin to use the same tool of the, of, the, of the enemy we are fighting against. We're fighting against hate. And because of bitterness, we begin to hate. And I believe God has not given us that. Bitterness is not healthy as we know. You will not grow due to it and cannot fully blossom. 
And we know that we don't want it, and neither does God want it for us. God wants for you to not be bitter, but I would conclude to continue to focus on better, a better community, a better justice system, better race relations. We have to keep focus and not allow the setbacks to cause us to become bitter. So I want to offer up how to source better. If we know that we can become bitter in our fight for justice, how, to, how do we source? Just like if you're looking for, how do you source for a new job? How, how do you source for a new car? If, you, if you've got to go buy a car, how do, you, how do I have a daughter who's a junior. Next year she's going to be a senior. She's going to be going off to college. How do we source for the right college for her to attend? And I will submit how you get better, how you source better, and avoid reproducing the cancer of bitter is to focus your energy and life on life-giving efforts, thoughts, people, and activities. Every time bitter shows up, you are prepared to combat it with God's, with godly thoughts like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, or we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Godly thoughts. Think on these things, those things that are noteworthy, those things that are of good report. If there be anything worthy of them, think on those things. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That reminds me how to source better my my mother my great my wife's grandmother who's now deceased when she uh we went to visit her several months before she passed away and while we were at her at her house uh she was suffering from congestive heart failure and we went to her room and she sat up on the side of the bed and you could tell she had little energy and she said Richie will you read to me a scripture, turn it to uh, Psalms 23. And I turned it to Psalms 23. And I started reading, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. And she cut me off. And she said, that's not how you read that scripture. And then I noticed a woman who had little life in her. All of a sudden burst into energy and dynamism and she said no that's not how you read it you say the lord is my shepherd i shall not want and all of a sudden this woman who was struggling for breath had life and was giving life and and it what it suggests and reminds me and reminds us all and that is that we source bitter through the word of god we source bitter we saw, I'm sorry, we source better through the word of God. We source better through godly things and not these worldly things. And so I want to remind you and affirm to you on this day that we all can become better. But we need to be lifted up and called to better. And there is a treasure trove of life-affirming messages in the Word of God and through the people of God that can counter the, the, the disease of bitterness. And so I close by asking you this day, as Joshua posed it, choose this day whom you will serve, bitter or better. As for me and my house, we are going to choose better. Let us pray. We claim better for Washington, D.C., for the White House, for the nation's capital. We claim better for families, for our finances. We claim better for race relations. 
God, we claim better for churches, for synagogues, or even mosques, Father. We claim better for community. And we are not going to be worn down, and we're not going to be defeated by bitter. But we're going to use your word, and we're going to stand on the promises of your word as we source better. We thank you. We praise you because we know that you are moving us to better. It's in the name of Jesus who showed us better by his love. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us on this day. Remember, every Friday, 9 a.m. Central Time, we come together to pray for the cancer called racism as, we, as this is our chemotherapy session to rid us, heal us, and deliver us of that cancer that continues to plague our nation's body. Take care and be blessed. Bye-bye.